Alice Merritt, the 28-year-old daughter of influential businessman Theodore Merritt and his wife Evelyn, first met Robert Cobb at a charity event dedicated to environmental protection in September 2019. Robert, a 32-year-old ecologist and activist, immediately caught Alice's attention with his passionate speech about the need to preserve Oregon's forests. Despite their different backgrounds, Alice grew up in luxury. While Robert came from a middle-class family, there was an instant connection between them. Their first date took place a week after they met at a small vegan cafe, where they talked for hours, discussing their views on life and plans for the future. The relationship developed rapidly. Robert impressed Alice's parents with his determination and sincerity, although Theodore Merritt was initially skeptical of his daughter's choice. Alice, in turn, quickly found common ground with Robert's parents, his father, a doctor, and his mother, an English teacher. Eight months after they met, during a hiking trip, Robert proposed to Alice. He had prepared a romantic picnic on a mountaintop with a scenic view of the forest. Alice, touched by Robert's sincere feelings and sharing his passion for nature, accepted without hesitation. The engagement was officially announced at a family dinner at the Merritt home in May 2020. Theodore, seeing his daughter's happiness, softened his stance and even offered financial assistance in organizing the wedding. Evelyn was thrilled at the prospect of planning a grand celebration. Robert and Alice began discussing their future, dreaming of working together on environmental projects and starting a family. They planned to move to a small town closer to nature after the wedding, where Robert could continue his forest protection activities and Alice could open an art gallery specializing in environmental art. Wedding preparations began almost immediately after the engagement announcement. Evelyn Merritt took on the role of chief organizer, aiming to create a grand event worthy of the family's status. She insisted on holding the ceremony at a prestigious country club with more than 300 guests, including influential businessmen and politicians. Robert, accustomed to a modest lifestyle and adhering to ecological principles, expressed concern about the scale of the planned event. He suggested a more intimate outdoor ceremony, possibly in one of the nature reserves where he worked. This led to the first serious disagreements between the couple. Alice found herself caught between two fires. On one hand, she understood her mother's desire to organize an impressive celebration and didn't want to upset her. On the other hand, she was close to Robert's ideas of a more eco-friendly and personal celebration. She tried to find a compromise, suggesting reducing the guest list and incorporating ecological elements into the decor and menu. Tensions escalated as the wedding date approached. Robert felt increasingly alienated from the planning process, which seemed to have completely consumed Alice and her mother. He began spending more time at work, immersing himself in a new project to protect endangered bird species. Alice, in turn, felt growing pressure. She tried to meet her family's expectations while staying true to her own principles and Robert's wishes. This led to frequent arguments with her mother and periods of silence with her fiancé. In an attempt to relieve the tension, Alice suggested taking a short break from planning and spending a weekend alone with Robert in the mountains. However, a week before the planned trip, Robert informed her that he couldn't go due to urgent work. Disappointed, Alice decided to spend this time with her friends to distract herself from the stress of wedding preparation. At the height of wedding preparations, when tensions between Alice and Robert reached their peak, Emil Cobb, Robert's cousin, entered their lives. Emil, a 30-year-old freelance photographer, had recently returned from an extended trip to South America and was staying in the city for a few months. Robert, wanting to distract himself from the wedding fuss, suggested Emil help with his environmental project by documenting the state of the forests. Emil enthusiastically agreed, seeing it as an opportunity to expand his portfolio. During one of the first project meetings, Robert introduced Emil to Alice. From the first moments of their interaction, an unexpected chemistry arose between Alice and Emil. Emil charmed Alice with his stories of travels and philosophical outlook on life. His ease and relaxed manner of communication sharply contrasted with the tension she had been feeling lately around Robert. Gradually, Alice and Emil began spending more and more time together. Under the pretext of helping choose a location for the wedding photo shoot, they often met in cafes and parks. 
their conversations became increasingly personal and candid. Alice shared her doubts about the upcoming wedding, and Emil listened attentively, without judging or giving advice. One evening, when Robert was again delayed at work, Alice and Emil met at a small bar. After a few glasses of wine, their interaction moved to a new level. Emil confessed that he had strong feelings for Alice, and she, to her surprise, reciprocated. The evening ended with a passionate kiss in a dark alley near the bar. From that moment on, a secret romance began between Alice and Emil. They met clandestinely, using every opportunity to be alone. Alice justified her frequent absences with wedding preparations, while Emil cited work on his photo project. Guilt tormented Alice, but at the same time, she couldn't deny how alive and free she felt around Emil. He awakened in her a passion and desire for adventure that she thought she had lost in her relationship with Robert. Robert, immersed in work and wedding preparations, initially didn't notice the changes in Alice's behavior. He was glad that Emil got along so well with his fiance and even thanked his cousin for helping distract Alice from the wedding stress. After a few weeks, Robert began to notice oddities in Alice's behavior. She became distracted, often canceled their joint plans, and talked less and less about the upcoming wedding. At first, Robert attributed this to stress from the wedding preparations, but gradually his suspicions grew. One evening, returning home earlier than usual, Robert caught Alice in a hurried phone conversation. Hearing his footsteps, she abruptly ended the call and looked frightened. When Robert asked who she was talking to, Alice unconvincingly replied that it was her mother discussing wedding details. Robert also noticed that Alice began mentioning Emil more often in conversations, talking about his photographs and travels with unusual enthusiasm. When Robert suggested spending a weekend together to restore their connection, Alice unexpectedly refused, citing urgent wedding preparation matters. Robert's suspicions intensified when he accidentally saw a message on Alice's phone from Emil. Although he didn't read the content, the tone of the message seemed too familiar for a mere acquaintance. Robert began analyzing Alice and Emil's behavior during their rare joint meetings, noticing long glances and casual touches. Trying to understand the situation, Robert began discreetly tracking Alice's movements. He noticed that she often visited areas of the city where she had no wedding-related business. Once, he even followed her to a small cafe where she met with Emil. Although Robert couldn't hear their conversation, the body language spoke of a deep emotional connection between them. Two weeks before the wedding, Robert decided to confront Alice. He chose an evening when they were supposed to discuss the final details of the ceremony. When Alice returned home, Robert was already waiting for her in the living room, nervously fingering the wedding invitations. Alice, we need to talk. Robert began trying to remain calm. Lately, I've noticed that you're becoming distant from me. You often cancel our meetings, you're constantly busy with something you don't want to talk about. I can't shake the feeling that something's wrong. Alice, caught off guard by Robert's directness, tried to joke it off. Honey, you're exaggerating. I'm just very busy with wedding preparations. You know how much there is to do. But Robert wasn't satisfied with this answer. It's not just about the wedding, Alice. I've seen how you interact with Emil. Is something going on between you two? Alice turned pale but quickly collected herself. What nonsense, Robert. Emil is your cousin. He's helping us with the wedding photos. Of course, we communicate. Robert, feeling that Alice wasn't telling the whole truth, continued to press. I saw you together at a cafe last week. You said you were going to choose flowers for the bouquet. But instead you met with him. Why did you lie to me? Alice, realizing that her deception had been exposed, tried to justify herself. I, I just didn't want to upset you. We were discussing a surprise for you at the wedding. Emil was helping me with ideas. But Robert no longer believed her words. He raised his voice. Stop lying to me, Alice. I see how you look at each other. There's clearly something between you. Tell me the truth. Alice, backed into a corner, burst into tears. Robert, please, let's not talk about this now. The wedding is in two weeks. Can we just focus on our future? Robert, disappointed by Alice's lack of honesty, 
shook his head. What future, Alice? How can I trust you if you can't be honest with me? Maybe we should postpone the wedding until we sort out our relationship. These words horrified Alice. No, Robert, please don't. We can't cancel the wedding. Think about the guests, our families. Everything is ready. I promise, after the wedding, we'll sort everything out. Robert, feeling trapped, agreed not to make hasty decisions. But the atmosphere between them became even more tense. They agreed to continue with the wedding preparations but both understood that their relationship was hanging by a thread. Alice and Robert's wedding day began in an atmosphere of tense anticipation. Despite all the organizers' efforts to create a festive mood, the air was filled with anxiety and uncertainty. Alice woke up early in the morning in her old room at her parents' house. Her mother, Evelyn, bustled around, helping with makeup and hair. Alice looked at her reflection in the mirror, but her thoughts were far away. She was thinking about Robert, about Emil, about the decisions that had led her to this day. Meanwhile, Robert was getting ready at a hotel near the ceremony venue. He was silent and pensive, which his friends attributed to pre-wedding jitters. But inside him, a storm of doubt and suspicion was raging. The ceremony was scheduled for noon at a luxurious country club. Guests began to arrive. Among them was Emil, who, despite the internal conflict, decided to attend his cousin's wedding. When Alice, dressed in an exquisite white gown, appeared at the end of the aisle on her father's arm, everyone fell silent. Robert, standing at the altar, momentarily forgot his doubts when he saw her beauty. But when their eyes met, he noticed fear and uncertainty in her gaze. The ceremony began. The priest spoke the traditional words about love and fidelity, but they sounded like mockery to Robert. When it came to the moment where the attendees are asked if anyone has any reasons why this marriage should not take place, Robert unexpectedly raised his hand. I can't do this, he said in a trembling voice. Alice, I know about you and Emil. The guests began to murmur, and Alice turned pale. Emil, sitting in the front row, jumped to his feet. Robert, what are you doing? Alice whispered, telling the truth. Robert replied, the truth that you couldn't tell me. I saw you together, I know about your meetings. How could you, Alice? How could both of you do this to me? Robert's words caused shock and confusion among the guests. Alice, unable to cope with her emotions, burst into tears, trying to say something, but the words caught in her throat. Emil, as pale as a sheet, slowly rose from his seat and began moving towards the altar. Robert, listen. It's not what you think, Emil began, but his words only intensified Robert's anger. Not what I think. What am I supposed to think when my fiancé and my cousin are secretly meeting behind my back? Robert raised his voice, his face red with rage. The guests began to whisper. Some stood up from their seats, not knowing how to react to the unfolding scene. Alice and Robert's parents tried to intervene but the tension between the three main participants in the drama was too strong. Emil, feeling that the situation was getting out of control, took a step forward. Robert, let's talk about this calmly. We can explain everything. But Robert was in no state to listen to explanations. He abruptly moved towards Emil, intending to grab him by the collar. At that moment, Emil, frightened by Robert's aggression, instinctively reached for the inside pocket of his jacket. Time seemed to slow down. The guests watched in horror as Emil pulled out a gun. No one knew he was carrying a weapon, and no one could have guessed why he needed it at a wedding. Emil, what are you doing? Alice screamed, throwing herself between the two men. The next moment a shot rang out. The sound echoed through the hall, causing everyone to freeze. Alice, standing between Robert and Emil, suddenly staggered and slowly sank to the floor. A red stain began to spread on her snow-white dress. A dead silence fell, which a second later was pierced by a scream of horror. Guests panicked and scattered. Someone was calling for an ambulance and the police. Robert, instantly forgetting his anger, fell to his knees beside Alice, trying to stop the bleeding. Emil stood in shock, not believing what had happened. The gun fell from his trembling hands. I didn't mean to. It was an accident, 
I just wanted to scare him. He mumbled as two guests twisted his arms behind his back. The paramedics arrived within minutes, but it was too late. Alice had lost too much blood. She died in Robert's arms without regaining consciousness. Her last words were a quiet, forgive me. The police quickly cordoned off the scene. Emile was immediately arrested, and Robert, still holding Alice's lifeless body, was in a state of shock. The parents of the deceased bride wept, unable to believe what had happened. What should have been a day of celebrating love turned into a tragedy that forever changed the lives of all present. The wedding hall, decorated with flowers and ribbons, became a crime scene, and Alice's white dress became a symbol of broken hopes and unfulfilled dreams. In the days following the tragedy, the city was shocked by what had happened. Local media covered every detail of the incident, turning a personal tragedy into a sensation. Alice and Robert's families found themselves at the center of attention, trying to cope not only with grief, but also with constant pressure from the press and the public. The police quickly completed their investigation. Despite Emile's claims that the shot was accidental, he was charged with manslaughter. The investigation established that the gun belonged to Emile and was unregistered. He explained that he carried the weapon due to threats received during his work as a photographer in South America, but he couldn't provide evidence of these threats. Emile's trial began three months after the incident. The process attracted enormous public attention. The courtroom was packed, and crowds of people gathered outside, eager to learn the details of the case. The prosecutor insisted on the maximum punishment, arguing that Emile brought a weapon to the wedding knowing about his relationship with the bride which indicated premeditation in his actions. The defense, in turn, tried to present what happened as a tragic accident, the result of emotional stress and fear of Robert's aggression. Robert, called as a witness, looked haggard and lost. His testimony was confused. He often fell silent, trying to hold back his emotions. He spoke about his suspicions regarding the relationship between Alice and Emile, about the confrontation before the wedding, and how he had planned to cancel the ceremony but didn't manage to do so. Alice's parents also testified in court. Their testimonies were filled with grief and anger. They demanded the harshest punishment for Emil, accusing him not only of their daughter's death but also of destroying their family. After two weeks of hearings, the jury reached a verdict. Emil was found guilty of manslaughter and illegal possession of a weapon. The judge, taking into account all the circumstances of the case, sentenced him to 15 years in prison with the possibility of parole after 10 years. The announcement of the sentence didn't bring relief to any of the parties. Alice's parents considered the punishment too lenient, while Emile's defense insisted that the sentence was too harsh for an accidental killing. Robert was not present at the sentencing. After giving testimony in court, he disappeared from the city. It later turned out that he had gone to a remote ecological reserve where he began working as a volunteer completely cutting himself off from his past life. The tragedy left a deep mark on the lives of all those involved in the events. Alice's parents sank into deep depression, her father abandoned his business, and her mother became actively involved in campaigns against gun violence. Robert's family, trying to cope with the aftermath of the tragedy, moved to another state, attempting to start life with a clean slate. They rarely spoke about what happened, but the memory of that fateful day forever changed their lives. Emile, while in prison, began keeping a diary in which he tried to make sense of what had happened and his role in the tragedy. He declined numerous offers for interviews and book deals, preferring to serve his sentence in silence and repentance. The story of Alice and Robert's tragic wedding became the subject of numerous discussions, court talk shows, and documentaries. It sparked debates about love, fidelity, forgiveness, and the dangers of carrying weapons. But for those who were directly involved in these events, it remained a painful reminder of how quickly life can change due to one reckless action.